Hi guys, I just wanted to come back on after yesterday's video and show you how to enroll students inside of your Google Classroom and show you a couple of things about grading. Um, I didn't want to share it yesterday because I didn't want you to be overwhelmed and I wanted you to kind of play with assignments. So today's video is just all about enrolling students, a quick and easy way to do that, and um, looking at grades and weighting those grades if you want to change them up. So have a look at the video. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, so this is an older class that I have already set up, and I wanted to show you this class. Now that you've kind of learned a little bit about assignments and so forth, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you have students enrolled in your class. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to enroll students in your class. Now there's two different ways to do it, and I highly recommend this first way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to your stream of your class, and see where it says class code, you can expand that. And what I would do is I would copy this class code and then I would make a Google Doc. So what I would do is I would make a generic Google Doc just telling your kiddos and parents how to connect to the internet that they can use Safari, the Chrome browser, or any browser that they have. Um, tell them to go to classroom.google.com Here's your email address because inevitably they always forget what their email address is, their password. And then I always put this in here because I've had lots of parents try to like sign into their kiddos' accounts and they don't realize that they can only sign in with their students' accounts. And then we talk about the plus sign. We may even need to like highlight this because I think that's important. Maybe they don't see that. And then the unique code. So once you have that unique code, once again, you're going to copy it, and then you'll paste it right there, and now they can log in to Google Classroom. Now, there's a second way to do it, and it's kind of tricky, but if you want to do it that way, you can do it. So what you're going to go do is you're going to go to people. I already have three people in my class, but what you can do is hit students and invite students, and then you can type in their email addresses here. Like I said, I would do it the first way, but if your school district wants you to just type in all your students' emails, you can do that as well. Now, also, if you are maybe um, on a team of teachers and you all want to have the same Google Classroom, what you can do is you can invite your partner teacher by inviting them there and putting in their email address, and that way each teacher can post assignments and so forth. If you're a team teacher, Maybe you want to have, you know, your math teacher post assignments in the same classroom as well. Now, the second thing that I want to show you, or the next thing I want to show you, is under classwork. So if you look at my classroom, you can see that I have different topics or sections inside of my Google Classroom. And so that allows me to kind of divide up each topic that I'm teaching. And so to do that is really easy. Um, all you're going to do is go up to the Create button, and then you will hit Topic. So t those topics will allow you to kind of organize your Google Classroom a little bit more. All right. Um, let's go ahead and look at one of our assignments so you can see what it looks like. So right now, once you have students enrolled inside the classroom, you can see that zero people have turned in and three people were assigned that assignment. Okay, let's go look at another one here. Here we go. This is a good one to look at. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to click on View Assignment. And this assignment I've done, a I've done a couple of things with. Under the instructions, you can see that I attached a Google Doc. And it has a couple of questions on it. And then I also inserted a video. On yesterday's video, I put a link on connecting a YouTube video in here. So they can watch a video and then work on a problem. So that's what I did here. Now if I go to student work, I have a live view of everyone's work. So I can click on this person. I can see exactly what they've done so far. If I want to go ahead and give this, this kiddo you know, some feedback now before they've turned it in, I can do that as well by adding a private comment. I can tell them, good job, keep working. I can also click here and give them a grade that way. So I'll go ahead and give her a 100. Once I've given her a grade, I'm going to hit return. 
and then that will send that assignment grade to that kiddo. All right, let me show you a couple more things just to get you through here. Um, so under grades, you can see all of the assignments that I have posted throughout the entire class. I can see that this one is already done and I can see the grades. So this is just a good quick screenshot of everything that you have, you have assigned to kiddos and who's turned in and who's missing and so forth. All right. Now, once again, on my stream, I can see all the assignments that I've posted. I posted a reminder here with a video and so forth. And this is what it looks like when a student comments. So I wanted to show you a couple more settings when it comes to grading. Um, so right now I'm in the grades tab. Here's my stream. I go to grades and I come over here to the settings wheel. I can change a couple of things. So I could change the name of the class if I wanted to. Um, but I want you to look at this grading. So when I taught middle school, I know that my grades were weighted differently. So if you come over here, you can click here and you can do weighted by category. It can change the weight of the grades depending on that. And it can also show your kiddos what their current grade is. I think that's really great because I think the middle school and high school kids want to know what their grade is. And then you can add your grade categories and tell how much. So, you know, tests sometimes are 50% and so forth. And then you keep adding that. So I wanted to show you that last little feature before I signed off.